intellectual and developmental dis disabilities. Joining us now is Dr. Tim Murphy of Upper St. Clair, a Republican congressman from the 18th Congressional District who also is a psychologist. Congressman Murphy serves as co-chair of the Bipartisan Congressional Mental Health Caucus and a founding member of the Republican Doctors Caucus. He has introduced legislation to overhaul the delivery of mental health care in this country. Dr. Murphy also serves in the U.S. Navy Reserve Medical Service Corps at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. In addition, he works as a Navy psychologist with service members who suffer from traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. David Schrimman, the executive editor of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, joins us now for this morning's discussion. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Uh, this may sound like a uh, stupid question, but are all suicides resulting from depression? No, uh, but a lot of them are, a vast majority. Uh, you're dealing with people with a lot of mental illness. Sometimes it's a, it's a, a quick response to some other tragedy. <clears throat> uh, but. It is important to understand that of those 40,000 suicides a year, and there's a million suicide attempts, this is a very, very serious problem in America. Plus, there is a worsening that takes place in older men, uh, a 30 percent increase in the last couple of decades or so. In any other area of medicine, we would be all over this as what is wrong. Uh, but it is perhaps uh, what, I, what I think of what the legacy that Robin Williams may give to this country in an unintended way is to help us uh, relearn, uh, re-understand, and refocus our efforts on dealing with mental health and depression in a different way. Would you agree with the, the report that we just heard from Jim Axel Axelrod about the uh, the tie-in between abuse of substances of some sort of manner and also uh, depression and then a suicide attempt? Yeah, there's two angles on this. One is people who abuse substances oftentimes have a high rate of depression, and people who are depressed or have other mental illness oftentimes seek substances as a self-medication. Also those with a physical illness, a chronic illness, about half of those with a chronic illness, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, Parkinson's, all those things, um, half of them have depression. Uh, some of that is just the, the, the aspects of more isolation, of sort of thinking back on their life, thinking of their future, those sort of uh, existential concerns, but also the physical changes that take place when you have chronic illness and what that does to your brain, to your, your nerves. For example, Parkinson's disease has an impact upon serotonin in the brain, the frontal lobe. What's, what's an important thing to understand here, this is not the blues. This is not a person who's just down in the dumps after something happened. This is somewhere where their brain doesn't think right anymore. It is uh, it's a serious physical problem. And very often those who are mentally ill just think, well, maybe I'm just feeling bad, and then it adds their guilt and worsening. It helps much more if they understand, no, your brain is not working right right now, and we have to get it working right again. Well, that, excuse me, David, that, that opens up the whole thing. And uh, how do you start the diagnosis process? Who makes the determination that something isn't connecting correctly? Well, you need a, a physical exam because many times those symptoms of depression can be an early sign of some other physical problems. <clears throat> but that being the case, Understand that a lot of people with mental illness, severe mental illness, schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, etc., oftentimes refuse care because they're not thinking correctly. One of the things referred to is something called anosognosia, where the person is specifically not aware that they are dealing with a mental illness. You can try and convince them all you want. Similar to someone who may have a stroke, who may not, who, a right sided stroke affects their left side, they may be completely negligent to their left arm, thinking it doesn't even exist. And, we, uh, and so we recognize, gee, this is a brain problem. We need to intervene on that. And that's why for some persons with severe mental illness, there's times that family members and others need to say, we need to get you help, even though you don't think you have it. Congressman Murphy, are all people who suffer from depression, and there are many in our community and across the country, are all of those people um, vulnerable uh, to um, the impulse that might prompt suicide? Well, there's an increased risk for suicide among those who are depressed, but certainly those who are depressed don't all go down the road to suicide. Right. Uh, and, and that's important to understand, because I don't want someone thinking, gee, I, I have some depression, does that automatically think I'm going to kill myself? No, not at all. What's also very important is for them to understand they can get better. Medications, specific types of psychotherapy, are very effective in treating depression. But then again, you mix that with the person who says, well, I don't really think I'm depressed, or I don't think I can get better. No one has invented the thing yet me and so they back away from the very thing they need so uh, if they do that then they do increase the risk and what is the how is um, depression 
diagnosed and are there levels of depression as a continuum? Yes, so there's a number of symptoms one looks at that can affect your, your eating habits, which can be increased or decreased, your sleep patterns uh, being disrupted, your general mood, your thought processes and approaches to life. It is a, an amazing amount of, of self-defeat and a, and a thought process that just uh, has a sense that I'm not going anywhere, I can't do anything. Um, it is, and again, it's different from just feeling the blues. All of us have felt down. All of us have felt tired. That's not it. It is a giving up. So much so, as sometimes someone may describe it, I don't even feel emotions anymore. I don't feel pain anymore. And sometimes they hurt themselves just so they can feel something again. This, um, again, I, I go back then. How do you start to... Oh, you almost have to self-diagnose in a way, don't you? Well, family members can be extremely helpful in saying, let's get you to see someone. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that person is headed down a road where they're really becoming um, quite disabled, gravely disabled, I'm a believer that says there's times like that you need to get that person into care, sometimes against their will, so they can get better enough to realize this. Wow, I mean, I, I saw a clip on uh, TV the other day of some man who was about to jump off a bridge. A police officer ran over and grabbed him, <clears throat> and the guy said, thank you, because I wish I had not done that. Thank you for saving me. Uh, that oftentimes happens to someone who has made a suicide attempt or is very depressed. That outside intervention is helpful. Mm -hmm. We've all seen Robin Williams on television, late night television, uh, uh, movies, uh, movies, whatever. A week ago today, if I had asked you, Mr. Murphy, do you think Robin Williams is a suicide candidate, what would you have said? I would say anybody could be in the sense that very often people with mental illness do such a good job at hiding it. Um, and particularly someone like that who made his career as being a comic, making people laugh. Yeah, uh, is that the tears of a crown of a drum, or, or is that just a cliche? Well, no, there's something to that in that if that is used as a way that if people who talk about Robin Williams' life saying you really couldn't get close to him, as soon as you started to talk to him, he would go into a routine. That I would be concerned about. Um, uh, many people in your profession, your other profession, in politics, you can't talk to them. They have routines. Yep, they have routines too. And let me tell you, just like any other uh, profession, mm -hmm. there's people who are in politics and in journalism and anywhere else who have depression. And what we have to do is say, uh, is to recognize as a society, it's okay to be to get help for that. And help can be can change your life for the better. What I look upon in my legislation, there's still so many federal barriers. We even say such things: a person is on disability payments, you will, they're not allowed to work enough to get out of poverty. Uh, we find that uh, the federal government or to get out of depression, or to get out of depression. Yeah, because if you start working, uh, you lose your disability, and therefore uh, you're. It, yeah, but if you start to work, you start to have a better self. Exactly. Right. So we we keep them pushed down there. We have to stop that. What is your legislation? What will it do? Well, it will do a number of things, particularly as it relates to this. We reauthorize some issues with regard to suicide uh, prevention and treatment. We authorize $100 million in brain research. We provide for more hospital beds for those who are acutely psychiatrically ill. Uh, we allow for, in Medicaid, strangely enough, it doesn't allow two doctor visits on the same day. We think of your pediatrician says, Mrs. Lanza, your son needs to see someone right now. That ought to happen. You can't uh, do two doctors, two doctors in one day? Yep, Medicaid says that. That must be same a job program for the transportation industry. Uh, that makes no sense whatsoever. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. I think their attempt was saying, well, let's not have people see too, see too many doctors. That just has to stop. It's absurd, and, and it's in one of the myriad areas. It's unbelievably inconvenient. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so it's, it's been introduced. Where does it's it been start? introduced. Uh, we have nearly 100 co-sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been talking regularly with leadership. Now we have change in leadership on the Republican side. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, the new leader, actually wants to move some parts in September, so we're looking to see what we get in there. The so given that this is an election year, that's on the one hand. On the other hand, Robin Williams... Are we going to get this through the House? And the, oh, or I think we're getting it, a lot. Or is this something we want to do, deal with next year? We'll get uh, many parts through the House. I don't know what the Senate will deal with. Um, but uh, I, one of the things that's interesting is editorials around the country, the Post Gazette among them, the Wall Street Journal, er, all around the country are pushing this. This is a grassroots movement like I've never seen. This is coming from parents and people like that and not just... We love it when uh, the Post Gazette and the Wall Street Journal agree editorially. God bless them. <laughs> all right. Congressman, thank you so much for being with thank us this morning on the KDPG Sunday.